Hello, this is Brad Williamson, and uh, I'm trying to put together a little video to try to help AP Biology teachers, help their students uh, to analyze the different AP Biology labs. In this case, AP Biology Artificial Selection Lab. And we'll mostly look at the mechanics of this. Let's do a quick review of the lab. The lab itself is uh, to pick some organism, identify a quantitative trait to target for selection, and grow up two generations. In this case we're going to use Wisconsin fast plants and these plants are part of a population of about a hundred plants and right here you can see that um, this particular individual has true leaves already showing up. This is about day seven or day eight and right here you see little trichomes, little hairs and that's going to be the target for our selection. Now what it did is I counted all of the plants in this population uh, their hairs and then I selected the hairiest ones and separated them out and they're over here. So these are the hairiest popula uh, uh, plants in the population and now I'm going to keep them separate, pollinate them separate with a separate bee stick, grow them all the way to seed, collect the seed and generate a new generation. Then we're going to count that generation and compare the two. Of course the question is, is the second generation hairier than the first? So let's get into the mechanics of the analysis and in Excel this time. And uh, let's look at the data first. We'll build some histograms. Then we'll calculate descriptive statistics. Then we'll calculate a p-value using the statistical test chosen, in, which is this case a t-test. This would be called statistical hypothesis testing. And then we'll do a graph of the overall results. So our first step is to take a look at the data. Now we could look at it here in these tables, uh, these two columns in this table, and here's the first generation and second generation trichomes for individual plants. And looking at that, it looks like on a whole, the second generation is a little hairier. I mean, like for instance, here's 60 right here versus 22. But there's a better way of doing that, and that is to actually look at the distribution and the spread of the data at the same time by graphing and do a type of graph called a histogram. Now I've hid some columns here that already have some boxes and labels ready to go. In this particular case I have some something called a bins, a bin uh, array. And this bin array is will give me intervals in which I'm going to count the number of individual data points that fit within that bin. So these are my bins and over here I'm going to put my frequency, the number of times it occurs that my data that I'm going to select occurs within that bin. To do that I use this spreadsheet function frequency right there and here's the instructions if you highlighted that that I want my data array and my bins array and this is my data array. I'm going to use a command shift down arrow to select all of those first generation plants. I'm then going to come over here and select my bins array which is this right here. Highlight that. Now before I move on I'm going to hit command T because I'm on a Mac and I'm going to use an absolute reference so I can go back to just specifically that array. And I don't hit an enter at this point because that will only give me one value but this is the frequency function is an array function. And so instead of just enter I hit command shift enter and it fills out the entire highlighted area and it gives me the number of counts. So all of the ones between 5 and 0, that's 14 of them, between 10 and 5, 24, and so on. So that's first generation. And the second generation, because I used an absolute reference to this array, I can figure out by just dragging this over like this, and that is pretty quick. So now I have the two groups of numbers, and you remember there was a 60? So um, there it is right there. There's three of them actually between 56 and 60. Now I'm going to graph these so they're highlighted so I'm just going to come up to chart and pick column graph and I've got that real fast. I'm going to get rid of this legend right here. Pull this a little larger so you can see it. I'll just put it right over the top of these bins. Excuse me, I'll put it right here. All right. Now I'm going to right click. Or I'm click one of these data points and then I'm going to right click and say format data series and I'm going to change this to 10%. This is under options 
and that'll make my bars wider. And I don't like the x-axis. It's just giving me the inter It's not telling me what those bins are. So to do that, I'm going to use select data and with a right click. And I'm going to copy. I'm going to create my category X labels. And I'm going to do that like this. Just come right here and highlight down. And boom. It's my intervals and my bins are described. Now to put title on there, I can go to chart layout. I can label my axes and stuff. And I'll do that. But right now, this gives me a view of my data. Here's the first generation in blue. And here's the second generation in red. And it looks like that there's been a shift in the populations. Now, since these are two different samples, first generation, second generation, these differences could have occurred by chance. And just by random selection, we got a, a group in the second generation that was on average hairier. But that's something we'll look at here in the future. But right now, that's a, that's a pretty good change. Okay, I've gone ahead and added uh, a title and a uh, axis label to the graph that uh, the histograms of the distributions. But now let's uh, let's calculate our descriptive statistics. Well, one thing we need to know is the size of our sample, and we can do that with spreadsheet function count equals count, and we want to count all of them in this array. Remember, Shift Command down arrow highlights them. When I close this off, I get a hundred. Mean on Excel is average, so equal average is the function. Again, the same. Now, we're going to do a standard deviation of this sample, which is helps us to measure the spread of that blue part. So we do equal standard deviation of the sample dot s. Dot s versus dot p is not all that important with the size of sample we have here, but we're going to go ahead and use it. Again, do the same thing. And now we get to standard error. Now standard error is estimated by taking the standard deviation of the sample and dividing by the square root of the sample size. So we're going to take the standard we're going to take the standard deviation of the sample and we're going to divide it by the sample size raised to the point zero point five power. And we end up with 0.86. Now, two times standard error is helps us to approximate at what's called a 95% confidence interval that we'll use on our um, graphs that we report out our data, our results. So I'm going to take equals two times this, and that's 1.72. Now, because I have my data displayed this way. And I want to now calculate the data for the descriptive statistics for this. I just move this over like that. And I now have 91 for sample size, a mean of 25, 24.5. Standard deviation is different, 12.7. Therefore, standard error is also different. OK, so no hypothesis statistic testing involves using calculating a statistic like a t-test, like a t, and uh, then looking at how often you'd get that large of a value by chance. And so it gives us an opportunity to see whether or not these two distributions are really different from each other, the blue distribution here versus the red. Now, Excel just puts everything behind the um, behind the screen, behind, <laughs> underneath the surface. And so this is not very intuitive. It's just kind of a plug and play. So in this case, the t-test p-value is calculated by going to the function equals t-test, not t-distribution, but t-test. Do your array 1, array 2. So we're going to do this is our array 1, comma. This is our array 2. And now the question is, how many tails? Well, the distribution in this case kind of looks somewhat like a normal distribution, like a bell-shaped curve. And so it has tails on both sides. And we're looking for, if our hypothesis, our null hypothesis, is that they're the same, 
that these two distributions are the same or there's no difference, then we need to use two tails. Uh, because there may be, you know, we could have gone the other direction. We went this way if the null hypothesis is true, but if the null hypothesis is true, we could have gone just as equally the other way. So let's go ahead and put two tails here. And finally, the type has to do with whether or not these have uh, equal uh, variance, like equal standard deviations or not, or whether we're doing paired, which is another kind of t-test. In this case, we're going to do three. You can uh, because we're going to they don't have the same standard deviation on the distributions, and we're not doing pair. You'd have to look up the instructions right here to find that. Anyway, when we hit this return, we find out what our probability is of getting a t statistic calculated from this data as large as we get, which Excel doesn't tell us what that number was. And it turns, but it does tell us what the probability is, which is. Oh, basically uh, four ten billionths of an opportunity to get that big of a difference by chance. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis because that's not very likely and basically make the argument, use this evidence as argument that this, diff this the second generation is different from the first. Okay, our final step is to create a graphic display of our results so that we can then use as evidence as we make our argument that these two populations are different from each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph the means because that is a descriptive statistic that kind of captures the central difference between these two. And we're going to again go up to chart and we'll go ahead and use a bar graph this time. And we get that real fast and again I want to get rid of this and it just says group 1 and group 2 data we want that to say first gen and second gen so like we did before let's uh, go down and select data category X labels and nice thing about this because the way it works we can just use those labels right there first gen and second gen and we have that over here we probably we want to call this we want to put some kind of title on this so we'll call this mean trichome and we can put first and second generation not a very good title but it'll do for now and we'll also put in our axis label which in this case uh, is trichome number Oops. And we now have our bar graph, but there's something missing. We could put our uncertainty in here with the standard error bars. And so to do that, I'm going to right click on the data, format the data series, and come over here to error bars, select both, caps, and I'm going to come down to custom, specify values because right now it just defaults out to these things and what we're going to do to do our specified positive error bar is we're going to come over here to this row right here which is plus or it's going to be plus two standard errors and we're going to do the minus two standard errors same way and we end up with error bars you can see that they're different sizes and this allows us to then make our argument with, you know, put this into our um, report. Now, you may not like this particular bar graph, so you can actually switch this to, say, a uh, line graph. And by doing a line graph, you end up with a, maybe a more appropriate graph, actually. So that wraps up the analysis part of the, of the uh, artificial exp uh, selection experiment in AP Biology. Hope that gets you started.